The Loud House was an interesting cartoon back in the day. It had a total of seven seasons, rivaled SpongeBob at some point, and spawned the most peculiar fan base I've ever seen. But if I'm being honest, the show started off hot, but slowly spiraled out of control for reasons you'll see soon. The Loud House actually starts off with the parents. They met at a young age and fell in love, eventually getting married. And the two got really busy and had a bunch of children. These scenes are actually from the movie of the cartoon, but let's get into the actual show. The very first episode of The Loud House is called Left in the Dark, and it gives us everything we need to know about Lincoln. It's finally here! The live season finale of the greatest show! In later episodes, we even see the personality of his sisters. However, they're not into the same thing that Lincoln Loud loves. His sister Lynn straight up rejects his offer and thinks comics are boring. Uh, come on, really? So your boy Lincoln Loud is struggling to find relatability with his sisters, not necessarily because he's the only guy, but just based off everyone's personality types and interests, there's gonna be some differences. Luckily, his best friend Clyde does show interest in hanging out with him, but Lincoln doesn't realize that. At least not yet. Anyways, the house is full of chaos and everyone wants to fight for Lily's attention and favor, the youngest sister on the cartoon. But she actually ends up choosing Clyde in the end. Now Lincoln decides to give us a really obvious PSA on how girls choose what they want in the end. No matter what we do, she's always gonna want the things she wants. Like we didn't know that before, Lincoln? Come on, man, I'm not stupid. I'm not an idiot. I don't really care if I step on any toes by calling Lincoln out for this because he gets a lot dumber in the later seasons, I'm not even joking. Look, Lincoln Loud is a cool, relatable character to many kids, but bro doesn't even know how to knock on a door. <laughs> now, there's actually a crazy twist in this episode. You won't believe what happens at the end. Remember, all the sisters in the Loud House have a different personality type. You got the happy characters, the sad characters. However, Lucy Loud is smiling near the end of this episode. She cracked a grin, bruh. What? How is she doing that? How are goth people allowed to do that? Anyways, you can probably tell throughout Lincoln Loud's life that he deals with a lot of BS. After all, he lives in a house filled with so many sisters. One day, his sister Luann was pranking everyone. She thinks she's Jadeon. I guess that's a wrap! <laughs> Aw, look at the Loud family getting jiggly with it! Lisa, for some reason, thinks that she's playing Call of Duty by wearing armor. And I don't know how she's able to carry this around without fainting from the heaviness, but let's just pretend she has supernatural powers. Lincoln Loud wants this year to be different. See, a boy doesn't want to get pranked, okay? He doesn't like the embarrassment, the pain, so he sets up a plan to stay indoors and lock everyone out. Kind of like in the Saw movies, how people try to make sure there's no way for Jigsaw to catch them, but they still end up failing. Homeboy even has a hose to pee in. I'm not even making this up. Yuck. Throughout this episode, Luann's acting like a complete maniac. Even I'm getting scared. Now, Luann is interesting for a number of reasons. One, she doesn't take life seriously. And you can tell she's just trying to scoop up as much fun as possible, squeezing in as much time with her family as she can get. Seriously, if I was in this family, I'd go nuts. That house is noisy and loud, thus the name The Loud House. Also, their last names are Loud. Wow. Throughout Lincoln Loud's life, we see he spends most of his time with his sisters. We even cut to the parents joining in on the shenanigans, which is surprising because you would assume that parents would be, you know, working. <laughs> Clyde has an obsession with Lori's room to which Lincoln Loud gracefully allows him to enter her room only for him to be hurt by traps. I volunteer to clear Lori's room. Clyde explains that this is worth it because he loves the smell. Lori's room smells like apple cinnamon. That might be this pie. Um, Clyde is giving Jiraiya a run for his money. This is the beginning of the infatuation with one of Lincoln Loud's sisters. Anyways, later in the episode, Ronnie Ann was supposed to come over, and Lincoln claims that this is why he intentionally went out of his way to protect her from these pranks. On purpose. But in a twist, Luann says this. Well, who do you think invited her over, genius? I knew I had to lure you out of your room, so I called Ronnie Ann. So Ronnie Ann is about to destroy Lincoln Loud's face with pie, but she actually helps Lincoln out here. Ronnie Ann is grateful to your boy, and she decides to help him and go on a date to get a milkshake. My goodness, Lincoln Loud has game. So the episode's about to end off, and we actually get a final prank on the family. 
All right, these Laos are crazy. Don't get me wrong. I would never be bored in this house. However, I don't know if I'd ever have a time for peace and quiet. Like imagine me trying to record a video and all you hear is screaming in the background and me getting pranked constantly. Like I would go insane. Moving on. Lincoln Loud sisters are all different. And there comes a point where Luna is acting very flustered. Near the end of Ellis for Love, we see that she writes a love letter to one of her friends, Sam, which birthed the fans of the Loud House shipping the two together. Now I just want to let you guys know, we're in 2023 and a lot has happened, but back then in 2016 to 2017, when the show was fresh, there was a lot of speculation on what Luna Loud was. Some people thought that that heart could have just been code for, I love you as a best friend. Girls love to give each other heart emojis. This happens a lot. Not necessarily something romantic, but just a friendly gesture. As opposed to guys, they don't usually do that too often. However, the fact that she's blushing as she gives her this note is crazy. This is very telling. She's definitely not straight. Moving on. There was a day that everyone had to do a report about the day they were born. Everyone in our class has to do a report about the day they were born, and tomorrow is my turn. Lincoln goes through books about his family, claiming his parents keep files and records on all the kids. But he opens up his birth story, but finds nothing. He asks his mom and dad about it, and they get super nervous. They get the facts wrong. This begs the question to if Lincoln Loud is even adopted. Is he a biological kid in the Loud family? I mean, the dude does have white hair and all his sisters have different colored hair. So he talks to Luann about his concerns and she reveals that they initially planned to have a girl. The family even decorated the room for a girl, not a boy, but were surprised when Lincoln Loud came out. LOL, Timmy Turner vibes. So throughout this episode, I have this weird feeling in my stomach and the weird feeling is the fact that Lincoln and Clyde are playing detective like they're Pikachu or something, like they're going on this hunt to find something very disturbing and I'm just sitting here thinking, this is so dumb. Are you sure you wanna find out your adopted buddy? At that age, pal, I don't think he can handle it. Knowing Lincoln loud, he wouldn't be mad enough to take it and burst out crying like a baby. So why is he doing all this extra stuff? Anyways, whether he's adopted or not doesn't actually matter because his parents chose him at the end of the day. I'm gonna leave this one up to your interpretation, okay? Moving on, from the episode titled, One of the Boys, Lincoln wishes he had brothers instead of sisters, and we actually see that. A cool little gender swap. I was surprised they made an episode about this. Usually subject matters like these stay off the show. Not really canon, you know, fan fiction territory, but the episode definitely does show everyone swapped. Moving on to some of the sisters. Lynn Loud loves to fart a lot. She loves Dutch ovens. One thing about Lynn is she has a tomboy attitude. She's pretty stern as well, into sports, etc. She even wears a jock strap, which led to a lot of theories about her identity. Lenny is Patrick Starr's best friend in terms of intelligence, although there are cases where you have to wonder, is she really a secret genius manipulating everyone into thinking she's dumb? Lori just wants to get the f out of the house and is self-centered. She's the type of girl who loves going to the mall and having boyfriends. Like, I'm not joking, that's her entire personality. Despite being the oldest sibling. Luna's pretty chill, she plays the guitar, just like me, I play the guitar, let me go get my guitar, no, it's not even to you, never mind. Also, in this show, you realize that Luna Loud cut her hair for unknown reasons. There's something going on with Luna Loud throughout this show that they don't talk about explicitly. They don't even mention it, it's just all implied. The viewer has to make a decision for themselves to decode it. However, later in the season, later in this video, you're gonna see how things are gonna get a lot more blatant. You're gonna see who Luna Loud really is, and we're gonna get every confirmation you've been looking for. Luann is a prankster. Lucy Loud has no soul. Lena is optimistic. Lola is loud. And Lisa is a genius. I'm serious. Lisa's giving Sandy Cheeks a run for her money. And last but not least, Lily is Lily. Alright, so on to the movie. This was anticipated for such a long time. I've been reviewing The Loud House for so many years, man. Five years plus at this point. And I remember they would announce the movie, and they would tease it, and it would get delayed, delayed, delayed. And when it finally came out, the final product we got was somewhat amateur, but still cool. I don't know how to explain it. It was mid. Mid is the best term I can use. See, after getting all these delays, we did finally get the movie. But the plot was just something we did not expect. 
Up until now, I never mentioned anything about the supernatural. However, apparently Lincoln Loud's family was a part of a royal bloodline this entire time. Flying dragons like this is some Shrek movie, and really lazy posters that just cropped images from the actual movie and just slapped it onto the cover. The poster just f***ing ripped a frame of Lincoln from the movie and slapped him onto the king's chair. Aw uh, yeah, that's Lincoln alright. Never seen without his trusty parachute, he wears that all the time. Look at this dragon. It wasn't even attempted to make this look like it was part of the actual frame. They just took a still and added a drop shadow while it has a completely separate angle of placement. Now in defense of this movie, I will say this. It was very cool to see the lighting and shading of the characters. Some aspects of this movie were cool. However... There was some animation in this movie that was just... Uh... My sisters always steal the spotlight. Why does the animation look like it's looped? Why does it look- Why does it look like I animated this in the past? You're a slow learner. I'll ask for a wish like Timmy Turner. It's looped. Anyways, Lincoln Loud thinks he's Shawn Mendes. And I think that Nickelodeon forgot that this is not Disney. Since when does Lincoln Loud sing, bruh? Anyways, his sisters barely play a role in this movie. It's all about Lincoln and this evil character. Overall, I'll give this a mid out of 10. Not bad, but not perfect either. Right in the middle. Also, this movie probably wasn't even written by the original creator, Chris Savino. He was dismissed a long time ago, so I'd imagine all these supernatural elements being thrown in was just random and s scrapping for ideas, I don't know. Anyways, back to the actual cartoon. By now, all the kids have aged slightly. Luna is getting more comfortable, being more open about her romance towards Sam, and vice versa. We see the two getting very close together. Now, this did spark some outrage in the community, which just baffles me, because I'm just sitting here scratching my chin trying to figure out how these same people didn't realize that Clyde has two dads. Like, if you're gonna get mad at Luna, at least be consistent, bro. Clyde has two dads the entire show. This is not new. This is not new. Anyways, moving away from that, Lincoln Loud just gets dumber and dumber as the show goes on. Like, I don't know if dumb is too harsh of a word, but I will say at the very least, he's clueless. I don't know if he was dropped on his head at some point throughout his life, but my goodness, does he act really ridiculous in some of the later episodes. Guys, in the movie, he made the entire trip about himself. He wanted to be in the spotlight, didn't care about anyone but himself, didn't give a crap about his sisters. I mean, the show has been running for so many seasons, yet Lincoln Loud's character development seems to be going in the reverse. I guess we should have seen this coming, but jeez. Oh my, why am I not in the spotlight? Wah, wah, go read a book, you- <coughs> You're privileged, you have a loving family, stop taking everything for granted and go help people or something. Stop complaining to me. Moving on to the final episode of The Loud House. It comes from an episode that deals with a road trip. Hide and sneak. You know, a little play on that hide and seek, you feel me? The Louds have to avoid the Casa Grandes when they visit the Great Lake City. You're not gonna believe how the Loud House ends off. It actually ends off with the gang eating tamales. Smell the uh, yes, tamales! Hey! Yup, that's how the Loud House ends. Great Lake City, I'm reminded that it's not always what you do that makes a trip. The Loud House is in this weird limbo phase. I'm pretty sure it's over, but I mean, they could reboot it at any point in time. They could say it's over today and then next year they could come out with a new season. You never know how these things goes. But what I want to say is this. There is more content after the Loud House cartoon. There was a movie called A Loud House Christmas. Live action comedy film. Everyone's preparing for Christmas and Lincoln Loud is talking about, oh, I want to get this and that. You know the gist of it. You know Lincoln Loud at this point. Now, one thing I will say about this movie and show is that they cast some pretty good actors. I could tell a lot of them are very ambitious, especially Lincoln Loud's dad. Look, I have a problem with Lincoln Loud's dad in the cartoon. The man is so adamant, so ridiculous, bro. He makes up all these crazy rules. But in this live action film and the show, He's pretty funny. Also, I like that Nickelodeon actually gave kids their dream to see their characters in real life. That's pretty rare to see. If I was a little bit younger, I'd imagine I'd be in love with this show, believe it or not. But now that I'm an adult, I'm sorry to break it to you guys, but my childhood is long over. I don't get that same pleasure from watching this kind of film. I'm not gonna lie, the live action Loud House threw me off because I'm not used to this look from Nickelodeon sitcoms. Usually live action shows have people on a set, but in this movie, it literally looks like they have a camera inside of a house, which is basically what they're doing. I guess that works. I guess that's cool. But this makes me feel like I'm watching Smosh or something. The family just has a bunch of fun, snowball fights, spending time together. Cool. 
Moving past this movie and onto the actual show, we see that Lincoln Loud has a crush, okay? With this show, you can see that they're trying to mimic cartoon elements into live action. Hello, father. Lucy scared the ding dang dickens out of me. Which is difficult to do for a lot of reasons. First of all, human beings are not cartoons, so you can't exaggerate as you would in a cartoon. However, they're still trying their best. Read aloud and her husband run into Dr. Simmons. Uh, good evening, Mr. Simmons. Dr. Simmons. And is he eating out of a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken? I thought I was watching The Loud House. Lucy Loud claims that she's giving Lincoln Loud a discount by burying him. Anyways, his mom and dad attempt to befriend the doctor to avoid medical expenses for all the kids. In one of my previous videos, I told you guys I have a theory that the Loud House dad is going broke. Ain't no way you gonna tell me a man with that many kids in his house is just balling 24-7, money out the pocket, no. And again, near the end of the episode, we get a PSA from Lincoln Loud. Man, they're really nailing the accuracy of the original show. Lincoln Loud loves to give his viewers PSAs. In fact, he breaks the fourth wall intentionally. We saw this in season one, and we're seeing it in the live action as well. Unfortunately for Lincoln Loud, he takes the L. Can I just say that these kids are too young to be dating? Like, what's going on here, man? This episode ends off with the family going into the ditch with Lincoln Loud. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not gonna redo that take because this show just made me bust out laughing at how ridiculous it is. I'm sorry. Lincoln Loud's dad now wants to take fried chicken to his neighbor to be friendly. Looks like I'm gonna have to take some more fried chicken to our new neighbor. <laughs> Guys, you can't make this stuff up. I don't know what's happening with this script. I don't know what's happening with this story. It's just really funny. In conclusion, what are your thoughts on The Loud House? How did this show affect you growing up? This show has been running for a long time. It came out a very long time ago and we're now in the year 2023. So I ask you, the viewer, what initially brought you into the love of The Loud House? What was it that brought you in? And do new episodes of The Loud House get you excited? Or do you go back to the older episodes to relive your childhood and feel that nostalgia? You know, there was actually one year, I remember it very vividly, the Loud House was on its way to surpassing Spongebob, I kid you not. Although it didn't beat Spongebob in sales and revenue, there was a point in time where the Loud House got a higher rating than Spongebob. Yes, you heard that correctly. The Loud House got a better rating at some point than Spongebob. Kids all over the world love this show. I'm so mad that some of these shows came out so late in my life. Bluey, The Loud House. I wonder if I would have loved The Loud House so much more if it just came out at the right time when I was growing up. But one thing I will say is yes, I can still watch cartoons at my age. However, when The Loud House came out, I was like 19, 18, I believe. So I was still in that childhood phase, but I was in uh, whatever. Now I know some of you want me to review the live action Loud House more in depth, but these are just actors trying to make a living. I don't see what else I can say. Throughout Lincoln Loud's life, he's been through a lot. A noisy house with a noisy family with a noisy, noisy, noisy. But what kind of kid is Lincoln Loud gonna grow up to be like? Is he gonna go off to college or is he gonna skip college entirely and become a businessman? You know, I think Lincoln Loud might actually become some type of entrepreneur when he grows up. I'm not joking, think about it. He's coming from a chaotic family who just makes a bunch of noise 24-7. Granted, he makes noise as well. He's egotistical, a little bit narcissistic in some episodes. Now, don't get me wrong, Lincoln Loud has been bullied in his life. I get that. However, he still has a little bit of pride. I think that Lincoln Loud might be a businessman when he grows up might get married to Ronnie Ann, have kids, who knows, anything can happen, the possibilities are endless. Or he might not get married at all, maybe Lincoln Loud grows up to be a very unflattering characteristic, maybe he grows up to look like Patrick Starr, we don't know. But what we do know is that the Loud House lasted for so long. Go ahead and click the like button on this video, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, and click the notification bell. Now I got another question for you guys. So which character on The Loud House would you say that you relate to the most? You got a lot of sisters in this house and Lincoln Loud. So who do you relate to the most? You could even say Rita Loud, Lynn, whoever you want to say. Go and leave a comment down below telling me who your favorite character is. And I'll be polite and also answer the question. My favorite character from The Loud House is probably Luna Loud. Luna Loud can play the guitar. She plays the electric guitar, which I'm assuming she can also play acoustic because if you could play the electric, you could play the acoustic. But I grew up playing the guitar 
So I will relate with Luna Loud. Also, Ronnie Ann's family is pretty chill. You know, there's so much lore to this cartoon. Lincoln Loud being adopted, the creator of the show being fired. I mean, there's so much that went wrong with this cartoon. For those of you curious as to why the creator of this show got cancelled, he basically did something you weren't supposed to do at the workplace, allegedly. And Nickelodeon actually stepped in, did an entire investigation, and gave him the boot. That was pretty shocking. It was big news back in the day. In fact, YouTubers have even reacted to this. The dark truth about the Loud House creator. My thing was, I knew the show was doomed at this point. By the way, if you're wondering why my voice sounds deeper and I sound a little bit monotone, it's because I woke up early to record this last segment. So you gotta excuse me, I'm not gonna be putting on that high energy voice. I knew the show was doomed once Chris Savino got the boot because you cannot take a creator out of a cartoon and expect it to do well. That's just not realistic. So there you go, the Loud House from beginning to end, the lore of the Loud House. Dude, if you watch this entire video, I just give you a big hug right now because I worked pretty hard on this video. Come over here, just just come through the screen. Give, give Colobia a hug, come on, man. 